What's going on everyone? Jeff Batters here at Drum Discipline Academy and today we are going to learn how to make slight modifications to a really cool fill so we can actually further develop our own voice. What a concept. Novel idea, right? So the fill that we're actually going to use to do all this is from the metal groove drumming legend Vinnie Paul. <laughs> The fill that we're going to deconstruct and learn today is from the Pantera song, Walk. This is one of Pantera's most popular songs, and it's from, in my opinion, actually their, their best album, Vulgar Display of Power. Just an inc incredible album. I remember the day it came out. The only song we actually heard before its release was this super cool, amazing, it was a first single called Mouth for War, which was just just so new and exciting and fresh. I mean, Pantera was the band that defined groove metal. And this whole album absolutely proved that. And Vinnie Paul's drumming really was the nucleus to, to all of it. So this fill is a two bar fill. The first bar is just eighth note triplets, but we're playing them as groupings of two. And it's just gonna be flam, kick, flam, kick, flam, kick, which is awesome. This creates a, a really cool quarter note triplet type of feel. We've done this with other fills, so this shouldn't be too new to us, but let's check it out. This is 1A one one, on your PDF. Two. Now let's orchestrate that around the toms. So we're gonna play snare, kick, and then tom two, kick, tom three, kick. Same thing, big fat flams, make them awesome, One, make them rock. Two, three. The second bar of the fill is based off a really familiar rhythmic concept we've we've covered before, which is called the herta. Four alternating strokes, but the first two are twice as fast as the last two. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Now the cool thing is this fill is based off eighth note triplets anyway, so the beginning of each herta is going to fall on the beat. So we're going to play three hertas right in a row, and then on beat four. We're gonna play six 16th note triplets, right, left, right, left, right, left to finish it. Let's do it all on the snare first so that we can really internalize this rhythm and the sticking and just own it. All right, One, this is two, two A. Three. All right, now the fun begins. Let's do the orchestrations, Vinnie Paul style. So with the Hertas, we're gonna play everything on the snare once again, but that last left, we're gonna to play tom one. So basically right, left, right, tom one. Right, left, right, tom one. So we'll do that three times. And then on beat four, where we have the six 16th note triplets, we're just going down the toms. We're playing two notes on tom one, two notes on tom two, two notes on tom three to finish it as strong as we one, can. All right, two. let's check it out. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
let's explore some variations of orchestrations with these heritas. One of my favorite ways to orchestrate the herita is to play the first two notes on tom one, the last two notes on the snare drum. This is very Carter Beaufort. This is very Dave Weckl. We've heard this many, many times. But the thing is, we need to practice this with intention so that we can play it well when we have the opportunity. We just can't think, oh, we've heard it a thousand times, so I can just kind of pull it off. No, we, we want to practice this so that we're prepared to play to the best of our ability. So let's try it. This is number three one, on your two, PDF. Three. One more cool variation of the Herita is the, the classic bucket of fish version, bucket of fish, where we substitute the last left with the kick drum. So right, left, right, kick. And we did a whole lesson on this a while back. If you haven't checked it out, you got to do it. We get into the nitty gritty of the bucket of fish. It's awesome. But for this orchestration, let's just use the, the standard kind of classic voicing of snare, tom one, tom three, kick. But we're also going to throw in the reverse version of that too, which is Tom 2, Tom 1, snare, kick. So Tom 2, Tom 1, snare, kick. And we're going to combine those two to see what cool variations or what kind of cool tension we can create with that, all right? This is 3B. One, Check two, her out. Three. Now we have to combine these two variations to see what kind of combinations we can come up with. And this is such an important, valuable step that, that I don't want you to skip. If you really want to integrate new ideas into your playing, you have to combine it with ideas that you're already familiar with. And that's, that's just the process. That, that's how we develop, that's how we grow, is that we have to learn how to integrate these newer ideas into our already familiar vocabulary. So if you want to own this stuff, just don't play the exercises. Once you get comfortable with the exercises, really start to improvise. And like I said, combine them with things you can already play. And you're going to see this integration, th these newer ideas really start to surface quicker. And you're going to play them more effectively, more with more fluidity, and just more confidence. So let's try it. I'm just going to improvise, see what we come One, up with. Two, Here we go. Three. Hey, if this lesson not only helped you understand this super cool, awesome Vinnie Paul fill, but it also gave you a better understanding of how to personalize your own fills, can you please like, share, subscribe? That, much like this fill, would rule. All right, troops, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I, I love taking these types of fills that are really already cool to begin with, but then modifying them a little bit to make them more unique to fit my playing style. And that's, that's ultimately, that's my hope for you. I want you to be able to take some fill, some groove, some idea that inspires you, but then make it your own. I know it's an extra step, but it's worth it. It's worth putting in the extra time and energy. I mean, this is, this is just what it takes really to separate you from the rest of the drumming world. 
you know, it just takes some extra time, some creativity, and a little something we like to call discipline. <laughs> All right, so, so just don't compromise. I want you to get after it. I want you to be committed to becoming your best. That is the goal, that's the mission. So until then, stay focused, practice with purpose. We'll see you soon. <laughs>